Welcome to a Wiser Retirement Podcast. We put together a guide with some recommendations to help you focus on being financially fit at different milestones in your life. Some of you may be ahead of schedule, while others may have to play catch up. You can download this guide for free on our website. The link to download your path to a lifetime of financial success is listed in the episode description. Or you can go to wiserinvestor.com, scroll to the bottom and find it there. Now on to today's episode. Welcome to a Wiser Retirement Podcast, where we believe the best financial advice should always be conflict-free. I'm your host, Casey Smith. Today, I'm joined with Marty Paradise of Paradise Business Coaching and Robert Swarthout of Teton Crypto Capital. Today, we're going to talk about making your business less dependent on you. Hey, guys. Hey, Casey. How are you? Thanks for having us on. Good morning. So this is a uh, uh, podcast via Zoom today, since uh, we're all sort of in different locations, mostly you, Marty. Uh <laughs> Thanks for joining us from Charlotte. How's things in Charlotte? Is it snowing yet? I'm in, I'm, I'm in Charleston. I'm sorry, Charleston. That's what I meant to say. Hopefully it's not snowing. I know, right? <laughs> I meant to say Charleston. It's a beautiful area. So let's, um, let's focus on the topic right away. I mean, Robert, you built uh, a company called Shootproof. Uh, you sold it. Um, kind of gone into uh, semi-retirement and then now you've started uh, Teton Crypto Capital, which by the way, you can listen to Robert and I in our, in our podcast. Um, uh, we do one about every two weeks on, on crypto topics. Uh, the last one was quite interesting with the uh, FTX uh, uh, blow up, but uh, that's, that's a whole different, that's a whole different series. Um, what, uh, uh, you know, wh- why is it important that we build processes to make our business less dependent on us. You know, I would say just the simple fact is you can't do everything and be everywhere, right? I mean, it's your business only can grow as fast as you have hours to put into the business, whether that's your hours, other people's hours. And when you're, you know, a sole entrepreneur, there's only 24 hours in a day and really not that many hours. You got to sleep and do other things. And it just comes down to figuring out how to like, maximize your time you know a doctor's office can only be so big because doctors only have so many hours in the day if you're in a business where you can multiply your time and allow customers to be purchasing something when you're sleeping that that's like you know in my opinion the ultimate goal but you know just trying to figure out how to get yourself out of the way and um let other people do work that kind of helps you work on the bigger picture i i would add just something fairly basic businesses that don't depend on the owner completely they're more fun to lead they're more they're more <laughs> fun and rewarding mm-hmm. as a as a very civil kind of why um point but um also with um businesses that you may in, intend to sell at some point in time will have fetch a higher premium if the business isn't completely dependent on the owner or just a few people in the business. So that's just another re- one of the many reasons I think why it's important to build a business that just doesn't depend on you for everything to get done. And uh, that's a journey. Yeah. I'm a big fan of businesses or business owners that even if they don't have immediate plans to sell the business, they're acting like they're going to sell the business because they're working on making sure they don't have to be around. Um, you know, it's easy to become the the main character of the storyline, right? Um, and it's probably helps with the ego and all that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, it's the ultimate reward is when you can like go on vacation and leave work at work. Um, and it may take a long time to get there for a lot of people, but it, I think it's super rewarding when you can do that. I think so many business owners though, it's their baby. I mean, how do you walk away? You can't walk away from the baby for two weeks or, yeah. you know, I mean, I, I just, I remember when I, when I purchased uh Wiser in 2007 and from Mr. Wiser and we had whole rooms full of, um, of paper, just like file cabinets after file cabinets. I'm like, man, this is a dizzle age, even in 2007. Right. <laughs> I just remember, um, hiring someone to scan all this stuff in and so the paper and the file cabinet slowly started disappearing and oh my gosh he would get so angry so angry where's my paper i can't find my paper you know and uh it changes hard uh you have a certain way of doing it and and this is the only way to do it and and people people uh can only you know they only have to meet with me because i'm the best and mm-hmm. and, and and reality is that 
you got to get people the best you and the, and the best product and, and the best product that's exhausted and not sleeping at night is probably not the best for the client, right? Mm -hmm. From a service standpoint, you know, or the client or the employees that you're, yeah. you know, I, it's something that, that I just thought of is I wonder if it's easier in manufacturing. If you manufacture something that requires machines and, and, and raw material comes in and a widget comes out, is it easier for those people to have a business that's less about them than it is for all of us in the service industry? I think all businesses are hard. <laughs> I, I, I think anybody in the manufacturing industry would tell you the last two years have been really tough. Right? <laughs> They've right. had different things to worry about. So maybe sales. Maybe you're you're just involved in sales at that point. Maybe mm -hmm. that's in relationships. Uh, yeah, Casey. I don't. I don't know if you're a business owner, manufacturing widgets. If it's if it's it's any easy. It's any easier. There's always mm -hmm. things that require at least at first of the business owner's attention is just different challenges in a manufacturing business with widgets versus a, a service business. Um, right. so, but the fundamental kind of issues and challenges and systems that they need are kind of universal, whether you're doing widgets or a service business like yours, Casey. So, so, so how do we, how should we be thinking about it, Marty? How, how should we start getting out of that mentality of everything in the business is about me? Um, Couple, couple, couple things um, with with my clients, and so just back. So I'm a small business coach. I've been doing this for ten plus years, and this is the like the fundamental problem with my normal small one to ten million dollar um, client that they their business is dependent on them. And so one one place I start with most most clients and your listeners on the phone could, if you, even if you have two or three people in your business. If you don't have an org chart, that's okay. You could kind of create one or pencil one in and think about the different functions or positions in your business and just simply scan the org chart and put your name in every one of those boxes that you are either occupying yourself or are occupying part of the way. But just when you think about that, I think most business owners are surprised at how many hats they're wearing, how many roles they're playing, how many kind of things and pieces of the business that they own or they have to touch for the business to produce the results. So that's one way of thinking about it. I don't know, Robert, with your thoughts on that. No, I, th I think you, you said it great there. I mean, it's, you know, you, you always joke about wearing different hats um, in the same day, really. It's, it's, you know, 15 minutes to 15 minutes can be different. And it's just the idea of really understanding what the problem is before you can go solve it, I think is super important. That's a great way to frame it. So, I remember the first time I turned over just my accounting to somebody else. You know, I always did QuickBooks myself, and and that is like, oh no, this is me because the business is so much of you as mm -hmm. it is. You know, your personal finances all kind of, all tend to blend sometimes. And um, yeah, that was hard. That was hard. The person I handed it to, I was like, I don't want to hand this to you, but you know, I've been told if I don't that. I, you know, it's going to be worse for me. So that yeah. was, that was the first step for me. And then it's easier to hand off stuff you don't like to do, but um, yeah. And then handing later handing uh, for us here, handing off uh, portfolio trading. I haven't made a trade in probably three years, but you know, handing off that is, Oh no, I can only do this, but I really can't. And I was, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't very good at it because I wasn't doing it at the right times and I was doing it in a hurry. It was mistake prone, you know, when you hire someone to come in and only focus on that job, you know, it's better for the client in the end. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, when I, when I talk to young entrepreneurs, they're always like, Ooh, you know, say they are in the business of painting paintings, right? Like they're an artist. They didn't start that business so they could run accounting for their business or do all the other things that need to happen to be successful. So understanding what those roles are, so you can start picking them off and trying to figure out ways to get out of that. I think is um, it provides a lot of clarity um, versus oh my gosh, I don't get to do the thing I love and I'm doing all the stuff I hate. Well, that that's totally in your control. So I mean, I don't know about you, Robert, but you know, for me when I started, there wasn't a whole lot of there wasn't really easy ways to outsource tasks. But now mm -hmm. I mean, there are so many things that can be outsourced yeah. through Upwork. Maybe not necessarily your accounting, but 
you need a logo refresh or you need you need yeah. something you can just go out and hire someone to to go and do that for you it's yeah, i mean pretty the amount of outsourcing options these days for just like the services is pretty amazing um you know even with my new fund like i have outsourced bookkeeping from day one and i pay like 199 or 299 dollars a month to have someone close my books once a month for me and then i know they're functionally done right versus me trying to <laughs> play an accountant for 15 minutes a month. So, yeah. So, uh, Marty, part, part of, part of that Casey, like before you get, get to that, there's an, there's another kind of skill that most small business owners need to develop, but they, they need, they need to kind of like get to the point of like, Hey, there's other people or other resources in virtual or employees that can probably do a better job mm -hmm. at this than, than I can. And, um, that's a, a point, but the other uh, idea is that they need to learn kind of the skill of, of delegating and yeah. assigning work, delegating work and holding others, whatever resources helping you get kind of more free of, of the, the technical parts of the business. You have to, you know, give people some rope and delegate it and magical things happen when you learn how to do, do that slowly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I, I have a group, uh, I have a breakfast I do with, with some advisors and uh, some of them are always surprised about how many meetings we run here. And what's interesting is I have a hard time giving up the relationship with a client because I know so much about them and that's what I love about what I do. But the follow-up work from the meeting is something that uh, was really bogging me down. And so we have a uh, associate advisors here that are always with me in a meeting. And so I do the meeting, we talk about big picture stuff, get down to the granular, but the referrals, other professionals, the meeting notes, um, any portfolio changes, any financial planning changes, any insurance changes, those are all handled by the, the associate. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of like a doctor, a doctor comes in and goes, yeah, you're sick. This is the prescription you need. And then the nurse comes in and does all the work afterwards. And then the pharmacist fills the subscription, right? Doctor's done probably five other meetings since since uh, you walked out of the building, and so that that's that's what I do here. Uh, but even that is is probably reaching its its uh, capacity. But it allows it allows one person to be able to do more things. So I think about if you're starting a business and you know you you got to get the laundry, you got to get your house clean, you got to get the yard mode. There's so many things that you can be outsourcing so you can focus your time on what's important including your family uh, mm -hmm. and 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 be able to be more productive to get more hours in the day. But there is a point at which even that doesn't help anymore. And you have to have this this or org chart, as you say it. Um, we do that. I probably do that once or twice a year. I write down this big org chart and I create positions that aren't even there. And <laughs> and, and then I take the, a different a different color marker and I like circle this person is doing these three jobs. I'm doing these two jobs. And then the goal is like, what do we need to do to grow the company so we can hire more people to just be, be those positions so we can do it better. Mm -hmm. um, and it's hard, it's scary. I think in, in this environment, you know, to expand a business when you're not sure about revenue, everyone keeps talking so negatively about the economy uh, to go, man, I gotta go hire this person. It's gonna cost me 60, $70,000 a year. Um, man, I hope this works. You know, it's scary as a business owner. So I, I think, you know, fight or flight, right? So we, we tend, we tend to flight <laughs> and we say, no, I just do, I'll just do all this. I'll just do all this. Mm -hmm. Um, but it just doesn't, doesn't, doesn't work in the long term. or you get burnt out and have an early death. Mm -hmm. Right. That's not good. either. Yeah. That's yeah. not good either. Casey, you know, this is actually, you know, this, this, um, podcast that I think you're up to about 150 episodes for, this is actually kind of a, a good example. So this is very good strategic use of your time. So you're, you're not like, delegating just like you're telling the clients start delegating the the some of these client meetings and just say you, you don't touch it but so you're coming in here and you're this is strategic use of your time for your clients you know coming up coming up with a great topic coming up with a great topic but in many ways you know you have hadley running parts of this process um scheduling it probably coordinating with robert and i on scheduling I doubt very much, uh, Casey, that you're 
doing the Zoom editing and posting this <laughs> to them. But that's a good example. So you don't have to give the whole thing away, but you can take the piece that you need to do and the other pieces can be done by someone do a better job probably than you given all the other things you're worrying about so exactly it's just an example so um it's a uh, uh, e-myth right the the um michael gerber's book he talks about working uh in the business versus on the business i think you call it tactical work or strategic work you want to talk about that for a little bit marty sure i mean um all business owners especially small business owners are challenged with their time. And so another way to think about your time without doing kind of the dreaded kind of time log of looking at 15 minute increments and like, where am I spending my time? That's a, actually a good exercise I would recommend for someone to do. But another wave of looking at that is really, there's just two types of work. There's technical work and there's strategic work. And so technical work kind of in the Michael Gerber, those are the things that are in the business. So those are doing the work of doing the work of the business. This is the activities of the business. This is the, all these little different functions that over time you want someone else to be doing the technical work of the business. And so that that frees up time for the own, for the owner to do more strategic work and kind of get on the business versus in the business. So it's a, it's a shift, but it's a, it's a way of thinking about it. And I um, done a lot of time studies with clients over the years. Uh, a, new, a new client coming in, coming into work with me is typically 70 to 80% of their time. And that's giving them a little bit of grace on the technical things that they're calling strategic, but they're, they're spending 75% of their time doing technical or tactical work of the business. And eventually if you want a business, you don't want it, you want just a job, you have to make that shift from doing the work of the business versus owning a business that does the work, kind of a big distinction. So that's just another way of thinking about that. I don't know, Robert, if you have comments on that, you've been through this journey. Both of you have been through this journey. I've been through this journey. Yeah, you know, like you said earlier, like you know, delegating is a big key. And like, I think for me, it was certainly the biggest challenge was delegating, but also willing to give whoever is going to do that work enough grace and leeway to fail and learn from it. Because it's too easy to see them start to fail and want to go in and save it and be like, and then you're telling yourself, see, I could have done this myself twice as fast and tw you know, twice as better. Where in reality, you have to give them the the space to kind of learn and then they can grow from there and then you know you turn around a month later and they're probably doing it better than you were um and like th that's where the real payoff comes and it's just not going to happen on day one i think it's you know if you hire the right people you're hiring people that are going to be you know better than sm or smarter or whatever the task is than you because for all intents and purposes entrepreneurs are like great jack of all trades um they figure out how to get it done but they're probably not awesome at everything no one is but you may be good at really one thing well start learn how to focus on that one thing and kind of delegate off all the smaller pieces or the not necessarily smaller but other pieces to people in the business so i think it's creating a process too you know that that's something that i get frustrated with because i feel like man this process worked a year ago just fine but now it's not working uh robert's always good to tell me if i'm not breaking processes and i'm not growing so um i i i tell everyone here that all the time is like, okay, well, we keep breaking this process, but that's fine. We're growing. We're servicing the client better than a year ago. So, you know, we, we just got to keep adding to it or subtracting from it. But, um, you know, I, I go back to, man, you go to a Chick-fil-A, you eat the same tasting chicken sandwich everywhere. And I'd say up until the, uh, this, this, uh, uh hiring, uh, crunch that we're all in. I would say the service was the same at every single Chick-fil-A. My pleasure, right? Mm -hmm, and, absolutely. And that, that's a repeatable process. And there's some training that goes in at the beginning 
but it's a process they have. It's a repeatable. And Gerber's book, he talks about McDonald's. I guess there just wasn't a Chick Fil A near him, so he couldn't reference that. But it's uh, an older, it's an older book too. <laughs> so. That's true. That's true. <laughs> but but yeah, so it's it's um, creating a process, but finding the people. So what is what is it? Um, was it uh, was that saying? People, processes, and profits. Right? Is that the three the three P's uh, mm-hmm. that that you're after? But um, so if you're a solo uh, business owner, you still should be writing processes. You should write down, this is how you do this. Uh, and then as you hire people, you say, okay, well, this is the process. So they, they can reference that, right? I mean, we have with our prospects here, we even have, uh, we always send thank you notes. So thank you for coming in. Now, if we don't get an address, then we have to do it via email, but it's literally written into the process now. Nice. That, you know, we check a box off on our CRM software that says, yes, we, I sent the note. So if you didn't send a note, you, you had to lie and check the box. So it's really hard to, it's really hard to screw that up, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but, but if, it's, if it's not written down or it's not part of your process and that you're sticking to, it's yeah. easy to just, then it just doesn't, it doesn't happen. And, and, and you're exactly right. So even something I wouldn't say it's sim- simple like a thank you note, but that's n- not a very complex thing given all the other things your your firm does, Casey. So. Right. Well, it's the thing that easily gets forgotten. You know, yeah. we had to make sure every, everybody here is getting the same consistent service um, as as they come through. But you know, it, it's it. I'll, you know, there's a book um, I read recently um, that talks about hiring because it's so hard to find people that are qualified now and even in my own industry I can't hire it's hard for me to hire experienced advisors because it's like taking someone from your Wendy's no knock against Wendy's but most Wendy's I've been to aren't known for great service and trying to get those people to come work at Chick-fil-a I want to be the Chick-fil-a in my industry and so I've, I've I, it's hard for me to bring people that are already tainted right into 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 my system but they talk about hiring the 51 percent you just got to find people with the right attitude that are teachable and so and then if I can put them into my process, then then I can train them. Uh, but yeah, I have the process uh, already created before they get there. You need you need both. You need great people, great process. That's where the magic comes together. Right. One without the other doesn't work. You need both. And so that and you know, Chick-fil-A is just masterful at that type of concept. And it, when you're talking, Casey, there's a kind of a term of, you know, Build, build your business like a franchise prototype, whether you're ever going to franchise it or not, but be thinking about like, if I was to franchise this, this mm-hmm. thing, what would I need to have in, in place? And you're going to need a lot of systems, a lot of process, a lot of thinking that can mm-hmm. be repeatable um, and build your business like a, I wouldn't say a McDonald's, build your business like with that franchise prototype in mind so that that also just gets back to our topic today. So it work, it can work without you being at the helm every single minute and your business having to depend on you so much. So, so what are, what are some ways, Robert, you want to say something? Yeah, I was going to just quickly add that, like, to me, writing the processes down is, is mostly about helping do delegation and help having a playbook for people, but it also enables your employees that are like go-getters and they find themselves with some free time, they can pick something up without asking about it, right? Like they, they don't have to come and ask for direction. They'd be like, they maybe they may see something and they can, they know where to go kind of get the um, the instructions and how to put it together effectively. Um, so it kind of enables some more of that um, natural, um, you know, good behavior. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So if, if I'm a busy business owner and I'm overwhelmed, um, what, what are some techniques that we could use to uh, start the process of figuring out what, what I can delegate? Um, I would recommend just take a average week, maybe not Thanksgiving week, but take an average re- week and just write down all the stuff that you're touching and, and doing in a given in a given week. And it's going to be a long list depending <laughs> on who you are. So that just like looking at, oh, I'm doing bookkeeping, I'm making sales, I'm going back to the shop to check on the widget production. I'm, you know, I'm doing, I'm doing 
all kind. I mean, all kinds of things, and take a look at that list, and then I would like really just go through that list of like, what are activities that I'm spending a lot of time on that could be done better by than someone by someone else, someone else. And so it's almost like a it's like delegate list, but getting a handle on where your time's going by kind of activities that you're doing is one other way of starting to, doesn't happen overnight, but move things off your plate um, so that you can free up your kind of the amount of time you're doing tactical things in the business that someone else could be doing, which then frees up time to be doing more of the things you should be doing as a, as a business owner, which is kind of getting back to the concept of strategic work systems, leading, managing, prioritizing, and everything else. So is it, is this kind of like the beginning part of scaling? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, when, when I was going through this, my last business for me, when I trying to figure out what I was going to get rid of next was what was the thing I liked the least that I had to do? Like in, in the way that I kind of figured that out was what, what am I doing that allows me to procrastinate on that? Like in, in the thing I'm procrastinating on is the thing that I'll get rid of and just slowly kind of just whittle away. Some of it would have been, you know, a task that took somebody 15 minutes a week. And other times it was something that it would be two or three hours a day in yeah. bigger cases, but just kind of like, you know, I, I, in some ways you're kind of balancing delegation with um, the mental health that, that you're going through. Cause you have so much, so much mental load that you have to carry. And like, how do you kind of whittle that down? To where it's not as much of a taxing situation. So, so sort of the next step of that though is to say you start getting better at that, but then you have to manage that for other people too, right? Because if your business is growing, then then the people you're delegating to, they're going to get overwhelmed. And sure. how do you how do you catch that? You know, because so many people today are just yes people, and they oh yeah I can take care of this, and they want to hoard jobs instead of letting go of work because they feel like they let go of work, they're not is important to you, Nick, lose your job, right? Yeah. For me, it was, I was really diligent about doing one-on-ones once a week with everybody and just like being honest and letting them know it's okay to say that I can't get it all done because it, because yeah. that's not going to help anybody. It's going to make your job worse. It's, you're going to burn out. You're going to want to leave all these kind of things, but like, you know, just having open and honest conversations and consistent you know, it was always on the calendar at a certain time with each person. So they kind of knew it wasn't like, oh, I'm getting called into his office. What's going on? Like, right. it's it's purely like a laid out thing. And they didn't have to be long. I mean, they could be 15, 20 minutes. Sometimes it was over lunch. You know, we kind of changed things up a little bit. But it was um, the ability just to kind of also understand where people wanted to go with their careers. Because you may find out that somebody really wants to do something that you hate to do. Well, guess what? I just gave you something to do. <laughs> like, um, right, right. Yeah, so. The, the only way, I mean, the only way you can accomplish that is kind of exactly what Robert says is meeting with employees, but you know, every, every small business needs some type of a meeting cadence or an opportunity to meet with employees in a constructive dialogue. And, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's, it's, it can be like, well, this didn't get done last week, but it's the kind of conversation that Robert's talking about is how do I make this feel more mm, part of this business how are, are they growing professionally and how are they helping the business and the owner at the same time mm -hmm. right yes. um, be more free from their details of the business so but that's um that's another um when you even think about systems and processes i i think um a one-on-one -on -one cadence or a rhythm that robert's describing that that's a system should happen on the same day or it should happen regularly. They shouldn't, it, it should have to be structured. It should have kind of a way that, that it operates with the business. And that mm -hmm. sometimes takes some time to kind of get, get going, but mm -hmm. that's absolutely critical. Um, kind of that's managing your employees through one-on-ones, regular check-ins, stand-ups, whatever you call them, but those are all key things that mm -hmm. help. What do you guys think is the most important for a small business owner um, to to be to be focused on uh, in this environment today? Meaning, we have kind of uncertainty. Should they be 
playing being more defensive should they should they um uh, be you know take take this maybe maybe things your sales are kind of moving sideways should they take time to evaluate all their processes and 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 and, and rebuild things i mean what 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 do business owners today need to be doing i mean because Mar- marty you, you i mean you have a list of clients that come in every week and, and talk with you what, what what are they saying right now they're um they're concerned we talked, we, we talked about we talked about um a little bit about Kind of developing, you know, in, in in times like today, of developing kind of a pulse of where your your business is going. You can call that KPIs, key, key strategic indicators. You can call those different types of things. But kind of managing the pulse of of the business is, I think, really Im- important right now. And a lot of different things, and it's different for every business. But what's the health of my business? So a, le- a good leader is is managing the pulse of their business. They should be doing that all the time. Yeah. Quite frankly, many of the things I coach clients on, they should be doing is just as part of business, whether or not we're headed toward the recession or an economic down, downturn, but be thinking about um, kind of the pulse of their business would be one area that I would- Like, like developing like, a dashboard. A dashboard or, or just making sure they're on top of the key numbers of the business. So you have a predictive view on how the business might perform three months from now versus how it's been performing over the last six months or nine months and having that dialed into a set of key numbers is one one thing that I would encourage every small business owner to do regardless of the economic outlook. That's good. Yeah, I would add that, you know, the numbers are certainly very important, but keeping tabs on the employees and how they feel in those times is just as important because they may be worried that the business is not doing good and they may be totally wrong about that. But like this, again, having those one-on-ones or having group meetings or whatever the correct thing is for your business, I think leads to people willing to rally together and try to go capture a hill versus people thinking, oh, some of us are going to go flank this way and flank that way. In reality, that's not the goal. Um, So just trying to keep Again, mental health is such a big thing, I think, and it's just keeping people, you know, energized and making them feel like they have a voice and the ability to kind of um, impact the greater good, I think, is, um, you know, one plus one equals three type thing. So, there you go. Casey, in, in summary, and Robert, I think we're saying the same thing, but in, in these type of times, you need to be leading your business, mm. Le- leading your business and looking at you know, making sure you're, you know, leading employees, you're, you're keeping track of the business and all the different pieces, but leading it, leading the business, I would, I would say just kind of a theme that I guess I would yeah, answer. But leading, one. leading by example, doesn't mean doing all the minutia. Exactly. <laughs> right. No, I mean, that, that's easily misunderstood. So yeah. that, yeah, being on your business versus in it, in lead, business, yes. leading and managing right. businesses um, is what I would, focus on um, yeah it's completely it's a really different mood right now i mean i remember in covid we had that huge drop in the s p and i i assembled all my all my people and i said look this is probably going to lead to some type of recession and this is in 2020 but i said there's no recession at wiser like we are not in recession like you your job is safe um we have a job to do and that's to make sure that people understand that they're still on a path to financial success, right? Or they're gonna stay on their path to financial success. And and it was much easier to lead because there was a sudden shock to the system. And you're like, oh crap, I gotta, I gotta come out of my coma and I gotta go, gotta go lead this group and we're gonna save the world, you know? And this this just feels different because it's like a, it's a it's a dull ache. You know, it's not a it's not a shock to the system. It's this long, dull ache that could be here for a year or two years, right? Uh, about to you know come up on a year mark, I guess, when we hit January. So it also could go away at any moment. But you you, you have to stay energized longer, mm-hmm. and and I think that that is. And I'm speaking my own self because I don't always take my own advice. Um, the you know is you have to stay energized as a leader. So so if you if you're in the every day for 12 hours a day. How can you possibly be energized to move your team 
or even your client base for that matter, right? right. So you have to do exactly. things for yourself that that energize you, right? So you got to find that time to, to step away. For me, I just need about a day or two. It's, I don't need weeks or anything like that. But um, it's just doing things that you that you enjoy and and making sure that you're looking at that thirty thousand foot view for sure. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah, I think that you know, energizing can be defined also as not having to deal with all the negative stuff too, right? Like um, it's that subtracting away from your energy. So again, trying to find way we keep going back to it, but find ways to delegate and find ways to kind of keep your and your employees' mental health in a positive spot um, will, you know, pr- produce good results typically. So it's just ensuring everyone in your company is focused on the top three economic objectives of the company, just a laser focus on ensuring everybody is put putting the muscle and the, and the work on the most important things um, to drive the company and making sure that people in your organization are aligned to that and you know just creating efficiency and being laser focused on that, I think as we head into uncertain waters here. All right, guys, um, great conversation. Thank you for your time. Mm-hmm. Thanks um, for having us and happy Thanksgiving to you both and to your listeners. They probably won't hear this for another week or two, but happy Thanksgiving. So, Thank you, Marty. If they want to learn more about your coaching program, uh, where do they go to find that? <laughs> Paradisebusinesscoaching.com. And I have a few resources that they can download and um, find out a little bit more about some of the things we talked about today, as well as what we talked about um, last time couple weeks ago, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Episode uh, 122 succession planning for small business owners is one that we've done um, uh, in the past. I don't I don't think you were on that one, Marty, but uh, I think our last one was uh, just talking about uh, growing, growing, starting and growing a business. Right. Um, we've got uh, commonly missed tax deduction for business owners. That's episode 83. You know, I, I've often threatened to uh, just do a podcast just for business owners, but um, we haven't we haven't done that yet. So we kind of get uh, spread out in our uh, business topics. Episode 104 was another one too, uh, an investment portfolio built for retirement, talking about business and, and how to uh, grow your business to sell it uh, uh, for retirement. Um, we also have some uh, other things on our YouTube channel, a wiser retirement, uh, why businesses can ways businesses can reduce taxes plan for the future is a video we have out there um and then we talked about business owners don't stop learning keep dreaming uh, that was a short video we did as well nice. um, again uh thanks guys and we'll talk to you soon all right thanks casey thanks for listening to a wiser retirement podcast we hope you enjoyed today's episode make sure to subscribe wherever you're listening that way you don't miss any new episodes we would also appreciate if you could leave a rating and review if you have any questions about anything that was discussed today head to wiserinvestor.com and reach out we would love to hear from you this episode was produced and edited by wilton moore 